Item number one, ratification of actions taken at organizational meeting. Town councils to vote for ratification of, of actions taken at the organizational meeting of January 3rd, 2015. I'd like to entertain a motion to ratify the actions taken at this organizational meeting on January 3rd, 2015. So moved. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Item number two, acceptance of meetings minutes. Minutes from two meetings on, of December 2nd, 2014 to be accepted and approved by the Town Council. I'd like to entertain a motion to approve the minutes from the December 2nd mo meeting. So moved. I have a second? Second. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Aye. Item number three, Town Council rules. Adoption of resolution number 15-001 for rules of the town council. I'd like to entertain a motion to adopt resolution number 15-001 as the rules of the town council. So moved. Second. Motion's been made and seconded by Councilwoman Catanzaro, seconded by Councilwoman Brady. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Ayes have it. Item number four. Purchasing board. Mayor Lombardi requests to, to appear before the town council for the purpose of discussion and possible vote concerning the purchasing board. <coughs> Mayor Lombardi. Mr. Chairman, members of the council, um, first let me um, wish everyone good luck, good health, and um, Godspeed. Um, at this time, I'd like to request that uh, we place this item on the uh, February 3rd agenda. It's okay. okay with you. Okay, I'll entertain a motion to continue this item to the February 3rd agenda. So moved. Second. Motion's been made by Councilman Canzaro, seconded by Councilman Brady. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very Aye. much. Ayes have it. Thank you, man. Item number five, smoke, snow removal from sidewalks. Councilwoman Brady and President Audiello request discussion and possible vote regarding snow removal from sidewalks. Dr. Lynn Ryan wishes to speak on this issue. Thank you, thank you, uh, Brady. Mr. President. I appreciate that in the past the mayor has asked our residents and business owners to help keep sidewalks safe for passage by clearing the snow. This awareness is excellent but we do need to do more. This item was discussed at our October Town Council meeting and it was referred to the Public Safety Committee. I've heard from residents who use buses for transportation, parents of children who are walkers, and also those in wheelchairs who say they're homebound until the ice and the snow melts. Although we've had an ordinance, we do have an ordinance in place that does speak to snow removal, we do need to work on a comprehensive plan to improve this situation. Perhaps we can work on uh, putting together a list of volunteers who might be able to help those who are unable to uh, shovel their sidewalks. I'm going to make a motion that we refer this matter to the Public Safety Committee to address this with the administration, the environmental commission and any other stakeholders second madam brady councilman brady yes uh, i was head of that safety committee and uh, i mark and i worked on that and uh, our biggest problem was we couldn't get anybody to volunteer we have the uh, we had a nice program going with the uh, senior center where kids would volunteer to do that mm -hmm. and uh, that's kind of going by the wayside because uh, uh, kids just are not coming around to, to volunteer to shovel. Mm -hmm. uh, we, he's also he's also checked uh, state laws, and we had no state laws on the books that could help us mm -hmm. with that. So if we do anything, we're going to have to do it on our own. It's going to have to 
be something to improve. I, I understand there are a number of barriers. I have heard from Troop 5 North Providence Boy Scouts. They have a limited number of volunteers who are willing to step up to the plate. I understand the seniors also, Senior Citizen Center also has a list. I haven't looked into the extent of that list of volunteers, but I do think it's time to address <coughs> it in some way because it does present a significant barrier. And as I said, I've heard from individuals who are confined to wheelchairs and they, they essentially are homebound until the ice and snow melts. So perhaps we can work together, as I mentioned before, with the administration, with all the stakeholders, including the Environmental Commission, just to do something. Even if it isn't a 100% resolution, at least we can move forward in the correct direction. And we, and we do have Dr. Ryan, who came out this evening, to speak to this too, just so that if everyone who uh, is con has a concern can work together, we can, we can do something. And, and work within uh, limitations, and we know we have many, but at least we can start moving forward. Okay, um, a motion's been made and seconded, so I'd like to take a vote on that first. So all those in favor of sending it to the Public Safety Committee? Aye. Aye. All those Aye. opposed? The ayes have it. And um, if Dr. Ryan would like to speak. <coughs> Just please state your name for the record. Um, Lynn Ryan, and I live in North Province at Lookout Avenue. Thank and you. also, uh, Mrs. Rosemary McNamara is also here and would like to speak on this matter. Sure. But as I wrote to a few of you, uh, my husband and I have been residents of North Providence for over 40 years. We've raised three children here. <coughs> and we ov are overall satisfied with the quality of services that are provided. But what continues to disappoint is this ordinance that is not enforced. And we really think that it's time that we take a stand. And as you did tonight, I'm very happy that you passed this ordinance. And as Councilwoman Brady has mentioned, you know, for, the, for children, for adults, for the elderly, for the disabled, whenever we have a snowstorm with an appreciable amount of snow, they're forced <coughs> to walk in the road, and they're forced to wait at bus stops in the road, and it puts their safety at risk. So I am really hoping that something does happen and I know you talked about volunteers. We have um, community service projects at many schools throughout the state. We could explore the possibility with the school department of perhaps having middle school students involved in a service project where they could engage in some um, service to people who cannot shovel their own sidewalks. But I think we also have to talk about the business owners who have not been shoveling their sidewalks in spite of this ordinance, and that is most upsetting. And perhaps, as I mentioned to some of you, the, the ones that are most egregious offenders are those who not only do not shovel, but also plow their driveways or plow their walkways and put the snow on the sidewalk so it takes it even longer to melt and make the, road, the sidewalks accessible. So I really, really hope this time that something will be done to ensure that we can walk on our sidewalks in North Providence and really maintain healthy lifestyles as well. So I thank you for your consideration thank you. and your time. Thank you. Would you like to speak as well? Or? Can you just come up to the microphone? Oh, oh yes, yes, yes. A couple of years ago, you I was really upset. Just state your really name for the upset. record. Am I, am I doing this wrong? No, just state your name for the record. Oh, my name is Rosemary Rocchio. Thank you. And um, yeah, a couple of years ago, I was really upset because not only were people not shoveling their sidewalk, and I understand individuals and the elderly and so forth, but I'm talking about Fatima Hospital, and um, they they had you know uh, they had I, in years past uh, they always had like some kind of a, a, a machine that they did their sidewalks with. But then a couple of years ago, they just stopped even trying or stopped, you know, making an attempt. And I thought it was because the attitude was, well, everybody drives everywhere, nobody walks. And uh, Mayor Lombardi and Dick Fossa, uh, former Mayor Fossa, they were very good. Eventually, they got Fatima Hospital to, 
do this. But, uh, and I'm, and what my main concern there was that when the workers at Fatima had to stand in the middle of High Service Avenue in order to catch a bus. I mean, they didn't have access to an automobile like the doctors did, but they might work in the kitchen and they had to ride the bus. They had to stand in the middle of High Service Avenue uh, and wait for the bus. And I thought that that was outrageous. I mean, years gone by, we all shoveled our sidewalks, uh, <coughs> and uh, especially businesses and schools and churches and everything. And, um, and I noticed that people, and this isn't North Providence, but I, um, it, part of it was North Providence, Fruit Hill Avenue, when we had a couple of snowstorms. The elderly were walking down the middle of high, uh, Fruit Hill Avenue to get to the stop and shop. The church, is, church didn't even plow the sidewalk. So over the years, like, I really have gotten upset about this. I, don't feel, I know there's an ordinance on the books. And I don't feel that, other than the fact that the mayor and, uh, and the former mayor did approach Fatima Hospital and, and they got them to do something, but I think all these businesses would do it if they knew it was the law and there was going to be some kind of a consequence for not doing it. I don't think it's a matter of money <coughs> or not being able to do it. I think, you know, they could hire somebody. They hire somebody to do their driveway. And um, I think it's just an attitude of not caring. So thank you for everything. <laughs> I didn't mean to. Thank you for coming me. out. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions? I have a couple motions I'd like to, uh, to put in order. Uh, now that the winter's upon us and, you know, the snow is coming, I think it's proper to send a, I'll make a, entertain a motion to send a communication to the mayor slash public safety director and the, and the chief of police asking them to be aware of this ordinance and to take a look at, you know, enforcing it the best they can. So moved. So moved. Second. The motion's been made by Councilman Brady, seconded by Canzaro. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Oh, ayes have it. I'd also like to make a motion for the town clerk to put an ad in the, uh, the North Providence Breeze new newspaper reminding people of the town code on this ordinance. So moved. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Let's have it. And then a third ad I think could go into the breeze looking for volunteers because I'm sure, you know, if word gets out there, we, we could find someone. So <coughs> I'd like to entertain a motion to put a third ad in the breeze looking for volunteers to help out with uh, shoveling. So moved. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And finally, uh, if, if businesses in town, if they have trade name certificates, um, the business names and addresses will be in our database. So I'd like our clerk to mail copies of the ordinances to all the businesses, just as a reminder to let them know. You're welcome. Is that in a motion or just in a motion? Is that a motion? I so moved. Yeah, so I'll put that in the form of a motion. So moved. Second. Okay, the motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Item right, number six on the agenda. Commonwealth Engineers and Consultants Incorporated. Councilwoman Brady requests a discussion and possible vote regarding the status of the purchase order for Commonwealth Engineers and Consultants Incorporated <coughs> to conduct a traffic study for Rosner Avenue, Thelma Street, and the surrounding areas. Councilwoman Brady. Thank you, Mr. President. At the December 2nd meeting, we voted to approve a purchase order for Commonwealth Engineering Company to conduct a traffic study for Rosner <coughs> Avenue, Thelma Street, and the surrounding streets. We did receive a letter from the purchasing director that was forwarded to us for last month's meeting stating that if Commonwealth Engineers and Consultants Incorporated will bill at the Rhode Island Master Price Agreement 494 rates, this would be acceptable as a valid purchase. He recommended that we execute a, a purchase order if we wish to proceed, and we did wish to proceed as expressed in that motion. We haven't heard back in writing from the Director of Purchasing, but our Council President had a conversation with him indicating that it's in, this matter is in progress. So I'd like to make a motion uh, for a letter to be sent to the Purchasing Director for approval of the purchase order in the amount of 6000 $887.09 for Commonwealth Engineers and Consultants Incorporated to conduct this traffic study for Rosner Avenue and the surrounding streets. Second. A motion has been made by Councilman Brady, seconded by Councilman Catanzaro. Any further discussion? All those in favor? 
Aye. 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 All those opposed? Ayes have it. Okay. Item number seven, outstanding, outstanding letters and correspondences. Councilwoman Catanzaro requests a discussion and vote on outstanding letters and correspondences. Councilwoman Catanzaro. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I have this item on the agenda this evening because we have approximately seven letters. They're all in our packet and everyone can review them that we've sent to uh, various departments in the administration. Um, we've given them ample time to reply and we haven't received uh, the letters back for the requests. Um, I'm assuming uh, 35 to 40 days is enough to get back with us um, to answer the questions. If anyone has any questions on the letters, they are here in our packet. Um, they're all the ones that we did in December and one still is from November. So I'd like to make a motion that we send these letters as a second request and ask for them to be answered within 10 business days back to the council for their responses and the ones that need to be forwarded to the committees that we requested be forwarded to the committees. A second. A motion has been made by Councilwoman Catanzaro, seconded by Councilwoman Brady. Any discussion? <coughs> All those in favor? Hold on one second. Councilwoman Stephen. I'm really sorry. I'm just hmm. finishing looking through these letters. <coughs> okay. Sorry. No, sir. Yep. Councilwoman Catanzaro, I just want to let you know I had a, uh, I talked to the mayor and I, I said that, you know, hopefully we can get some correspondence on these letters within the next week or so, but I will support that motion, so. Thank you very all, much, All Mr. those President. in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Ayes have it. Item number eight, monthly financials. Councilwoman Catanzaro requests discussion and vote on the council receiving monthly financials, expenditures for all departments. Councilwoman Catanzaro. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, in the past, we've received monthly financials with uh, up-to-date expenditures for each department. In order for this council to do our job and keep the finger on the pulse where uh, the budget is at, we should be afforded these financials. And it's been several months. We haven't been receiving these financials. It's very important for the council to get this information also for our finance committee to review to make sure all the expenditures are staying within their budget and if there's anything that um, is a red flag it's up to us to ask why to make sure the expenditures are staying where they're supposed to be so I would like to entertain a motion uh, to send a correspondence to the finance director along with the administration requesting that the council get a copy of the monthly financials with the expenditures um, and also forward those to the finance committee for their full uh, review. Second. Okay, a motion has been made by Councilman Catanzaro, seconded by Councilwoman Brady. Any discussion? Uh, Mr. President, uh, I, I, I agree with um, what Councilwoman Catanzaro is stating, but I just believe that <coughs> financials should go directly to the Finance Committee. And I don't think, um, you know, I think the Finance Committee needs to foster a relationship with the Finance Director who should come before them, you know, on a quarterly basis to give them an update, you know, including Department Directors to give them, you know, the Finance Committee an update as to the status of the town. Yeah. And then I think it's the place of the Finance Committee to bring that to this full council. Okay. Okay. Well, this is to, for each of us to get the financial statements in our packet each month, correct? All right. And then also uh, to be reviewed in the Finance Committee. Yeah. Because then, the council oversees all committees, so we would all want to get a copy of the financials, and then just the persons who were in the Finance Committee would be reviewing it with their findings. Okay. All right, so the motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Okay, the ayes have it. Item number nine, 14 <coughs> grill. Discussion and possible vote to reconsider the vote to non-renew the liquor license, which transpired on December, December 2nd, 2015, 
with regard to Florentine Grill Incorporated, DBA Florentine Grill. This was advertised in the Providence Journal on December 26, 2014 and January 2, 2015. Would you like to come up? How are you doing? Hi, uh, Nick Anicelli, Florentine Grill, Inc., Douglas Avenue. Um, I didn't renew the liquor license uh, in December. It lapsed. I was under the impression I didn't have to renew it, and a potential buyer of my building would go ahead and do that. But then afterwards, very quickly, I realized that that wasn't the right way to do it. And so I'm here right now trying to get the liquor license back. I've had it for all those years. So okay. I, I'm actually, the restaurant's closed. I'm in Florida. So it's for, actively for sale right now. And that's really the only license I, I, I need to sell it. And I know the other ones, the other licenses I had are non-transferable. So the new owner is going to have to get those, I guess, the outdoor, the outside yes. dining and the other yeah. ones. So that's basically it. Does anyone have any questions for Ms. Diana Celli? No. Okay, I'm going to make a, entertain a motion to reconsider the vote taken on December 2nd, at the December 2nd, 2014 meeting, not to renew the BV liquor license. So for, moved. For Florentine Grill Incorporated. Second. The motion's been made and seconded by Councilman Bra made by Canzaro, seconded by Councilman Brady. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? The ayes have it. Thank okay. you. Now I'd also like to make a motion to renew the BV liquor license of the Florentine Grill Incorporated, sub subject to all necessary requirements. So moved. Second. Motion has been made by Councilman Catanzaro, seconded by Councilman Brady. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Good luck. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Have fun in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> Number 10, a victualing license. Town Council to consider the approval of a victualing license for, from Michael McAteer, DBA Calzone City, located at 2009 Smith Street. Mr. McAteer here. Can you come up to the mic, please? Please say your name for the microphone. Jahira Mercedes. Can you spell that for me, please? Y-A-J-A-I-R-A. -A -A. <coughs> last name Mercedes, M-E-R-C-E-D-E-S. Oh. And you're here representing yes. Mr. Mack? Mr. President, put a question. Councilman? Where's this, where's this located? Across the street. Across the street. Does anybody have any questions? Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to make a motion to approve subject to all necessary requirements. So, so moved. moved. Motion's been made by Councilman Catanzaro. Second? Second. Seconded by Councilman Brady. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Ayes have it. All those opposed? Good luck. Good luck. Item number 11, victualing license. Town Council to consider the approval of a victualing license from Anastasius Tamadia, DBA Healthy Heaven, located at 1531 Smith Street. Do I have a representative here? <coughs> How you doing? Good evening, everybody. Very good. Can you just state your name for the record, please? Anastasius Tamadis. Okay. Seems like I'll hit this before I put Anybody have any questions? Yeah, where are you located exactly? 1531, right there. Used to be Gold Gym there in that plaza. Where Gold Gym used to be? Oh, all right. Where is that? Where Gold Gym used to be? Gold Gym, okay. Yeah. All right, I'll make a motion to approve subject to all necessary requirements. So moved. Second. Motion's been made by Councilman Catanzaro, second by Councilman Brady. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Okay. Good luck. Thank you very much. Have a nice evening. You're welcome. You as well. <laughs> Item number 12, victualing license. Town Council to consider the approval of victualing license from Mock A. Green, DBA Sunrise Diner, located at 2053 Smith Street. Mark Anthony Green. How you doing? How are you? Where's this one? 
Where is, uh, where is this located? It's right next to Larry's Lounge, 2053 Smith Street. Okay. Uh, right across from Rose Rose Beef. Okay. We're so oriented to where is it next to. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> is that the old Ethan? Uh... Correct, yes. Okay. Yeah. Does anybody have any questions for Mr. Green? Hearing none, I'd like to entertain a motion to approve subject to all necessary requirements. So moved. Second. Motion has been made by Councilman Catanzaro, second by Councilman Brady. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Good luck. Thank you, and you have a good night. Good luck. Thank you, too. Item number 13, sealer of weights and measures. Discussion and vote regarding a new proposal for equipment needed for the sealer of weights and measures. This item was addressed at the two November 2014 meeting, but the amounts need needed have changed. Mr. President, Honorable Council, uh, my name is Vito Martinelli. Uh, I have been appointed the sealer of weights and measures <coughs> along with the deputy sealer, Sal Ionero. Uh, this issue regarding equipment has been an issue um, prior to my appointment. The equipment for the Town of North Providence, the sealer weights and measure equipment, has not been updated or even uh, new equipment for at least 25 years. When I was sealer weights and measures in 94, the equipment was at least 10 years old. So by then, through the course of having uh, two or three different sealer weights and measures and, the, and time itself, we had some equipment uh, failure. Uh, we've missed some equipment to no fault of anybody. It just happens over the course of 25, 30 years. And the equipment has to be updated. Now, this is an expenditure that was approved in last year's budget. Uh, and it was supposed to come out of uh, a, uh, a, a separate account. The problem that we had was the information that we were given by the state uh, was outdated. It was a book of 2010 where we were updating our equipment for the town. Uh, when we went to go and purchase the equipment, we found out through the clerk's office that the equipment was more expensive than it originally we had budgeted for, if you will, for 2013. And we needed approval for the additional money. Now, I will tell you, it, it is about a $3,000 expenditure for all of the equipment. But I would ask the Honorable Council to consider the fact that this money is being spent for the town and it's being spent for the town businesses. If you were to give up uh, the sealer weights and measures and allow the state to continue to do it, which it has been for the past year, the businesses in the town of North Providence would be paying a considerable more money for the service of weights and measures. In other words, I, I was quoted at almost triple the amount that they would bet the, when the town does it, it's a considerable savings for the businesses. So you would be saving the businesses uh, a quite a, a lot of money, the gas stations and, and jewelry places and whatnot. So I would like the council to factor that in. I know that the, the amount has gone up uh, about twelve to $1,500. So you're looking at a total expenditure of approximately three to uh, 3000 to 3500 taking into consideration that the equipment has not been upgraded for 25 plus years and the fact that you are returning this money back to the businesses of North Providence, I would ask the Honorable Council to uh, consider approving that expenditure. Thank you. Mr. Martinelli, thanks for coming and clarifying that for us. And any, any questions that the Honorable Council has, I'd be happy to answer as to, you know, what specifically what equipment, what it does, and how, how this is a uh, important service for the people uh, of North Providence and for the businesses of North Providence. Does anybody have any questions? Mr. President, I do. Go ahead. Um, thank you for coming and explaining, and, and I do agree. I know the equipment that we had was just very, very old. Is there any equipment that is salvageable? Yes, we have one, uh, one container that's sal salvageable. We have the weight system itself is sal salvageable, but there are three weights missing. There are also, in the course of years gone by, because of technology and because of uh, you know, the, the way the gas pumps have changed, the way measuring devices have changed over the past 25, 30 years, we've actually had to upgrade a couple of pieces of equipment that we did not have at prior seal of weights and measures did not have, such as the Graham measuring kit that has to be used now for all jewelry stores, 
and for CVS, medical equipment and that and whatnot. So taking into account that there was equipment antiquated that's 25 plus years old. There's equipment that, a few pieces of equipment that was missing. There's a few pieces of equipment that just broke down through time. And the fact that we've had to update a few pieces of equipment. Again, I think it's a very, I know $3,000 is a lot of money. I'm not saying that's a small amount of money, but in the realm and the big perspective here, what we're doing for the businesses in North Providence, we're saving them a considerable amount. Their taxes, in essence, would be going up if you don't approve this expenditure. So, I mean, it's a maintenance tax, it's a maintenance fee. And, you know, Hess Gas Station, for example, when they're certified through the state, it's several hundreds of dollars more than it would be if you had your seal of weights and measures going out. And don't forget, you're also keeping that money in the town. The money that the expenditure that the businesses are paying is money staying in the town of North Providence versus the expenditure that businesses are paying now is basically going out of the town. I agree with you, and I, you know, in my opinion, that's why we did appoint you, because it was about providing the same service to the business for the least amount of money that they could get charged. And that was the incentive to us to do that. We didn't want to impose additional costs on them. So that's why we did appoint you. We know you've done it in the past, and, and I thank you for looking up all the equipment. I know you know how to do it and what it entails. So um, I am in support of that. Thank you. And uh, we appreciate you doing all that work for the businesses, too. I, and I do appreciate your support, Councilman <coughs> Katzenauer, and I do appreciate Councilman Juicy's support <coughs> you know, him coming out as well and, and uh, you know, asking me to come in and help out with this issue. Uh, I'm very grateful to Councilman Juicy. Did you give that list of the stuff that you need? To yes. The, 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 Are we the, all set? Yes, Councilman Juicy. The way this is supposed to work, Mr. President, the way this is supposed to work is the equipment, the clerk's office, in essence, controls the seal of weights and measures and we, we answer directly to the council as the clerk's office does. And what the clerk does is they order the equipment, they maintain the records for the equipment, and the sealer weights and measures is responsible for the equipment. So this new equipment that you have coming in will be accounted for. The clerk will have the proper records so that we'll be signing off. So in the future, if there is a weight missing, you know, the, and this the accountability. Is, this is specialty equipment, right? There's only it is specialty there. equipment. It's, it's not something that you can buy, you know, unfortunately, that you could go to Target or someplace and buy this equipment. And it's a reasonable question to ask. Uh, it has to come from certain places. This is a national organization, the Seal of Weights and Measures. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's a federal organization as well, the Seal of Weights and Measures federal organization. But the town retains the right to, um, to control this okay. uh, element of... Uh, I got it, I got it. Yeah, uh, uh, you know, uh, this, it, it, the town retains the right to control this procedure and this, uh, this enforcement of, of to ensure equity. You know, the job is to ensure equity between the customer and the merchant. Now, you could pass that responsibility on to the state, or you, you can pass that responsibility on to the federal government, but it's the, it's the town. Mm -hmm. They have the ultimate responsibility to keep it or pass it on. Mm -hmm. And I'm just recommending that you keep it. Awesome, Mr. <coughs> President, I'd like to make a motion to approve the uh, purchase of the equipment you requested in the amount of three thousand dollars is that the correct approximately amount? three thousand I don't want to approximately be, I don't three thousand dollars in on that number that'll be the motion approximately three thousand dollars thank okay, you the motion's been made by Councilman Brady seconded by Councilman Juicy all those in favor aye, aye. aye. all those opposed the ayes have it thank, thank you. you thank all you right. very much thank you Vito thank you. Item number 14, Gibbs Street, Angel Road, received a letter from A. Raphael Lombardi requesting to speak to the Town Council regarding the Gibbs Street encroachment on Angel Road. Good evening, uh, Mr. President. Uh, congratulations. Thank and uh, we're back again with uh, Gibbs Street. And I just want to know uh, what has been done. Uh, I don't see anything uh, in evidence. Um, a point of order, and I brought this up last time, that uh, the uh, then president uh, 
uh, Kristen Catanzaro had asked specifically for a letter to be sent to the zoning board. What came out of that was not a letter from the zoning board, but a, a, a letter from the planning board. That's not the same organization. So I don't know what has been done that to is this one point. Of Councilwoman Catanzaro's letters that has not been answered yet. So we made a motion earlier to send uh, communication to the, to the mayor's office, hopefully getting the answer to some of those questions within the next 10 business days. Okay, now the, the letter's been sent to the mayor or to? The mayor, because that was a zoning, that was uh, the, letter, the letters were sent out before. Well, to, a well oh, wait, wait, let me finish. Yeah. The letters were sent out to the zoning and to all the different places, asking them what took place. We never received an answer back from them. Right? Well. So, so now what we've done tonight, I don't think you were here. I think you came in afterwards. Oh, yeah, you came in after. We, we sent a letter. We're sending a letter to these different boards and to the mayor telling them that we have not received their answer and we want an answer within the next 10 days. Okay. Mr. That's, that's President. The, go ahead. Uh, but I'm there just was reviewing the, uh, the letters that we haven't received a correspondence on, and I don't see that letter in our correspondence. So maybe we want to make a motion to send another request because if we don't, it's, it's not in there to send it. I don't see that one in there. Okay. So. Um, I know that we did, but I just don't see it in the list of them that we have in our packets. There was a letter from the zoning board, you know, a very nice letter that uh, he addressed the situation and more or less declared that it wasn't uh, wide enough for a two-way street and so forth. But that was not his domain, technically. Uh, okay. Kelly Morris uh, did say she didn't get anything, and I emailed her back and forth, but uh, then the planning board letter came out. So, but it's still not okay, properly well, I'm, I'm gonna executed. Okay, I'm going to motion to include Thank this you. in that package of letters. And what do you this was We'd have to look back and see what, it must have been in November that um, when he yeah, came November, and asked, and maybe we spoke of it again in December, yeah. but we'll just have to look in the correspondence folder. So I'll enter, I will um, move that motion. Second. Okay. And then if my memory serves me correctly, Mr. Lynch, did uh, mention to me that the letter or whatever the council had put together at, at one point, way back when, uh, was sitting on the mayor's desk. That was will, maybe two years ago. And I will ask him for you. You know, so I don't Who know. Who told you that? Please. Who told you that? Uh, John Lynch. How does he know it was sitting on the desk? Well, that's what he told me, that oh. when I asked him, you know, where were we yeah, going okay. with this, it's, yeah. it's up to the mayor now. Okay, so let, let's, let's, the motion's been made for number 14. Let's take okay. a vote on that. To resend that letter. To resend that letter. Okay. Motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? The ayes have it. Thank you. Item, item number 15, Woodward Road Curvature. I received a letter from A. Raphael Lombardi requesting to speak to the town council regarding a follow-up on the surveyor's finding regarding the Woodward Road curvature. So uh, am I being too rambunctious about what the surveyor's findings are, but I don't, what is the progress report on that? Give me, uh, I will find out for you. Give me a. Uh, okay. I'm, I'm still getting acclimated to the yeah, business, I, but I will I, find that out for you. Okay? All right. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Item number 16, expansion of Angel Road. Received a letter from A. Raphael Lombardi requesting to speak to the town council regarding the expansion of Angel Road segment between Woodard Road and Pope Street by removing the trees, leveling and repaving the area. Okay, now if there is a problem establishing the uh, property line of uh, 8 Gibbs property, you know, hanging over onto Angel Road, uh, what is there to prevent the town from removing about a half a dozen of massive trees and all kinds of rocks and stuff to expand that portion of the road, okay, until the surveyor establishes that the um, 
ocean state fence that belongs to A. Gibbs is, you know, a very definite line. You don't put up a fence without a surveyor, and therefore all that other overhang is encroaching on Angel Road. In fact, uh, these people must have some privileges. There is a opposite Eight Gibbs Road, a, a very, very wide pavement, which serves no one any purpose whatsoever, yet there's no sidewalk or pavement for people to walk on this small segment of Angel Road between Woodward Road and Pope. Okay, so opposite this property of Eight Gibbs uh, is a very, very wide, uh, professionally done sidewalk. Doesn't help anybody except maybe the people that live on. So which, you're mainly looking for to have the, the trees removed, the overhang? Yeah, now we're talking about the other side of Angel Road. Okay, there's the, the, the overhang from the Eight Gibbs property. Yep. Then across the street, you might say, <clears throat> there is uh, uh, about six feet uh, in which you find about a half a dozen massive trees, and those things can be cleared out, and at least that portion of the road could be available for passengers, to, uh, cars to uh, go through and or a sidewalk, if nothing. Mr. President? Go ahead. Why can't we set up... Um an on-site review with whomever you feel is appropriate to go out with um, Mr. Lombardi and explain this um, mm. so he can show them physically um, where he feels the danger is and the safety issues are. Because month after month we send letters back and forth and we're not getting a response or the response comes back and it's not answering Mr. Lombardi's question and he's shaking his head because he's been through this several times. Why can't why we don't we just set up an appointment? Why with can't we Mr. see Lombardi? if we can set up a meeting between Mr. Lombardi or you know ourselves and the tree warden in town and, and see if those trees you're talking about can be removed because there's a lot of restrictions between you know that I'm not aware of and I don't no. know if anybody in this council is. I think the trees can only be removed if they're not Jeez. healthy. Right. Yeah. So having to remove trees on something that's encroaching, that would end up having to be uh, maybe zoning or something. But what I'm saying is because there's so many different issues, which it's on Angel Road, Gibbs Street, Pope Street, if we physically go out and look, whether it's the mayor, whether it's Chief Fossa, whether it's the DPW director, Frank Bercy, whoever it might be, who you deem the, the person, at least to go out with Mr. Lombardi to look at everything. Now, one, one, uh, one decision that was made by the council was to have an engineer deem it a uh, one-way street or not. You know, and that sort of fell through the cracks also. Um, so, you have a question? I do. Have we that. notified the individuals? I'm assuming that not all of these trees are, you know, they have to be owned by multiple individuals, correct? Multiple residents? Well, I think the problem is that this, have, have this all, you have to go involved. before what Lewis Quizzet uh, development, I guess there was a certain amount of uh, free space there, you might say. And I don't know. I don't know really. But it's very clear that. I guess to avoid what they call creep, and, you know, the trees or the, the show, they, they put uh, railroad ties and a wall way beyond their fence. Now, again, we're talking around the people of, uh, who own the property, and if they put up the fence, they had to have a surveyor, so it's a very simple matter. You don't, you don't put up a fence and then add uh, shrubs and railroad ties and a wall that encroaches on a road that has been an occasion for accidents. The police department, I think Mr. Lynch did give me a, a stack of papers because I persisted in trying to get the data of how many accidents occurred on that segment and the result was about eight. I know one, you know, where the two uh, 
But Mr. Ramirez Lombardi. clashed. But right. Mr. Lombardi, what I'm asking is, have we notified the individuals who own those pieces of property? Yeah, that would be a decent courtesy I thing mean, I to. Think that's uh, the first thing, besides you know setting up the meeting, which I think is a great idea, I would love to be part of it. This is in my district, but I think we need to start notifying the in the property owners for the areas to which he's stating. Yeah, I, I am 100% in agreement. That's a very good idea that, you know, I don't want to stick my nose into people's business. I shouldn't already implicating these poor people. But uh, if there is a, uh, a grievance of some sort, then the, the, the idea would be to go to that person and tell them, you know, or express this concern and then see if they would be willing to uh, make an adjustment. From what I heard from the uh, acting uh, town clerk uh, recently, uh, when he and uh, Mr. Albert Di Petrillo were uh, on board here in this, uh, perhaps in the zoning or whatever, the, this particular uh, property owner was given a citation of violation, but somehow or other it fell through the cracks, okay? Or when there was a movement from one location of the zoning board to another, there was a flood and the papers were lost. Whatever. It sounds, uh, if you read the, this morning's paper, you would know what I'm talking about if you read between the lines or above the lines. Can I, can I ask you, you know, obviously it's my first meeting, um, you know, uh, and, I, and I know that you're a resident within Lewis Quizzet, correct? Yes. Um, just out of curiosity, from Gibbs to Angel to Woodward to Pope, um, what is the reasoning? What is the what? You know, what is the reasoning that you've taken this on as an, as an individual? Which, okay. you know, by the way, thank you for coming in front of us. I, okay, well, I personally, residents okay, personally I react. was a passenger in a car. Two Nissans clashed. Their, their, their rear view mirrors clashed. So you were in and, an accident? And I was in the, I was in the a passenger there. It cost $500 each. The insurance people took care of it. The police officer that was uh, uh, on that job uh, recommended to me, why don't you try and make it a one way? So I've been. Pope Street. Yeah, just that little section. Now, I know there are funerals, and, and the <coughs> funeral directors want their cars to go from Woodward to uh, Pope. Well, that was the beginning. Now, another thing is people who live in Lewis Quizzet uh, should be able to walk to St. Anthony's and not have to take their cars. You know, we don't have any, and I've seen uh, kids and other people walking in the wintertime, very treacherous there with the ice. So uh, there is need for at least a sidewalk, if not wider, a wider street. As I say, the people who own Eight Gibbs have a wonderful sidewalk in front of the house where, in shrubs, I guess, to cover uh, St. Anthony's uh, uh, Center when they built it. Okay, and even Gibbs Street is not completely paved for a sidewalk, just certain sections, you know. Mr. President, yeah. I'd like to make a motion that we set up a meeting with Mr. Lombardi and whoever else on this committee wants to meet. I think with, with Councilman with, from the district, Councilman yeah, Lodge. Right, mm -hmm. and also with somebody from the administration that's responsible for that kind of work. And set that up down the road, and then you people can come back with whatever you have. Just to add to that, I think you need to bring in the church as an Yeah, I'm sure Father Condetti would have something to say. Everybody wants to be at that meeting is more than welcome, and mm -hmm. I would just recommend that that's what we do for now on this, mm -hmm. that you all go there, meet, and see what the problem is so everybody understands the problem and everybody sees it with, with their own eyes. Yeah. Okay, okay very good. The, the letter from the town planner was pretty clear about what he made for observation. In fact, he took a photo, and he, he did admit that it was sort of narrow for uh, two, two cars to go by. Yeah, but this way here, everybody gets to see it with their own eyes. Whatever, whatever it takes, you know. We're going uh, to set up that meeting, and, and I think okay. everyone going out to the site, out of this forum will be helpful for all of us to discuss. Okay. Yeah, all right. Participant yeah. observation. The motion has been made uh, by Councilman Juicy. Second. Seconded by Councilwoman Catanzaro. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? The ayes have it.
Item number 17, separate licensing board, received a letter from A. Raphael. This is. Yeah, I just not 100%, not 100 sure that that Woodward Road curvature, too, is that going to be something that you, it's not too far away from that segment of Angel Road? I know. We'll, we'll, so the, the I think all of us going out to the site, you know, I mean, the councilman in the district. Okay. Now, where are we here? We're okay, on so. 17. We're, we're on 17. Board. Now, I, I have noticed in the past uh, that you may have maybe nine applications for licenses, even up to 16. I noticed the agenda was set differently, so you put the license request a little further back in the agenda. But um, I'm going to call your attention to uh, uh, Public Law 99407, an act relating to retail uh, licensing that was uh, presented by the Senator, Senator Salona Graziano and Montalbano. This goes back to February 11, uh, 1999. And uh, this, rega rega this is in Section 3716.5 uh, regarding Class M licenses. Quote, the local licensing board of the town of North Providence all right, I repeat, the local licensing board of the town of North Providence has the power to grant and may grant on request a license for the retail sale of alcoholic beverages at such locations. This is, this is in regard to a, a particular section of Mineral Spring Avenue between Woodward Road and uh, Terry Street in that area. So. Uh, sitting at these meetings, I, I noticed that a lot of this trivia regarding license, and of course that's a good source of revenue, can be handled by a separate board. Uh, like you have a school committee, you have a zoning board, you have a planning board. Why can't you have a licensing board like this actual uh, legal document from the state of Rhode Island uh, <coughs> testifies that there is a possibility whether or not you have put it into act. So if you could get rid of all this, I call it administrivia, uh, administri uh, you have to deal with these things, uh, they're important, but my, my main goal is to see the mayor sitting with you people as a, a mayoral type of council, which I invoke again the charter, the, uh, uh, the rules or whatever you have there, that the former government for the town of North Providence uh, is known to be as a mayor hyphen council. Okay? Now, so far up to now, you people have been operating as a separate body, sometimes in antagonism with the, the mayor and back and forth. So this is not uh, a normal, it is not what the intended idea of a council or in church government is called a synod, okay? Some of the orthodox... Can you speak yeah? to, the, to the licensing board, though? I think you're getting a little off topic. Well, I'm, I'm asking, okay, for the... Uh, what is the topic we're talking about? The licensing, the licensing board. Yeah, so I'm asking you people to consider having a, a separate zoning, a, a separate licensing board, which will take care under the town clerk or the maybe uh, the zoning board like the building permits and so forth, all that stuff is done there. You know, the, all this licensing stuff can be handled either the town clerk, I'm sorry, I don't want to put more work Mr. on yours. <laughs> but oh, to clear the deck so that you can have some more serious issues that you need to resolve with the mayor. Mafio, why would we take and form more government when we handle the licensing for all liquors? Why? Because you, uh, your uh, energy should be devoted to more important things, like a building permit is handled by the zoning. More, there's something, there's nothing more important than making sure the right people get the, the, the control of dishing out uh, liquor in this town. And well, I'm sure. Of, a lot of there's our, a lot of people that, that would, would pass out liquor to minors, to drunks, 
we, we, we don't need any of that. Why would we want to pass, why would we duplicate? My main thing is, why would we duplicate government when we're doing it and we're handling it perfect? We have no problems with our liquor in the town. There's we have no problems with, with our... With okay, our there's, there's a principle called the principle of subsidiarity. That means you don't do anything that's something lower than you can do. Therefore, just like they can, uh, the people who apply for building permits go over to that building over there and gets a building permit if they're doing carpentry, this, that, the other. These things and your concerns are good, and that's why you need a board, a, a, a zone, a licensing board. You don't just have one or two people. Those same people will take your concerns into consideration and, and issue or not issue a license. That's just duplication of, of government. You're just creating more government by creating another board. We handle it. We've, not, we've had, fortunately, we've had no problems in this town with, with liquor licenses. We, we had one when, where we caught a bunch of people uh, serving to minors, and they were all fined, and, and, and we've never had a problem since, and that was uh, about 10 years ago. See, see uh, Mr. Lombardi, well, the problem is, is when things go wrong with these bars, who's the first people the constituents call is us. So I think what? The, the first people that the constituents call when there's an issue in the neighborhoods or trouble with the bars is us, council people. Okay. We represent them. So I think us having control over the licenses, you know, I, I would like to see it stay. All right. But on council. the other hand, we have in writing, uh, I'm, I'm talking about February 11th, 1999, Okay, we're the local licensing board of the town of North Providence. Where did they get that? They didn't pull that out of the, the sky. There no, has to be. But I was in high school in 99, so I don't know. Huh? I don't have the answer to that one. <laughs> so. we, the, we, we're handling it. I think we're doing a very good job at it. And I, and, and I, and I commend all my fellow uh, council people for the job they've been doing. I understand. I, understand yeah, I, I'm just wanna, I want you guys to get home early in the night. I appreciate you know? that. See, so that if you could get rid of this stuff, which is, you know, good luck, good luck, you know, it, it's a matter of a, a procedural thing, and I understand it, but that can be done uh, by the town clerk or, the, or some sort of board, and there should be more than one member so that uh, it's, it's done properly. I understand your point. Okay? okay. I'm just bringing it up to you because uh, I'm trying to get you people to go home a little earlier. I like that. And that you don't... You know, you have some material that the mayor finds worthy to consider himself. You want to have the mayor come over here and and listen to all these uh, application uh, approach for a license. You understand? Let's move on to number 18 because I want right, to. Number 18. Access legal counsel received yes. a letter from A. Raphael Lombardi requesting to speak to the town council regarding the assessment of excess legal counsel. Yeah, I got the impression after hearing uh, about this uh, ex-FBI uh, uh, white-collar crime man who now is a lawyer operating out of Middletown, I told him he's worth his weight in gold from his experience. Um, I'm not questioning, you know, the fact that you people have engaged him. I don't know why. Is that for the whistleblowing? Or yes. Is it strictly for whistleblowing? Yes. I didn't understand that. Yes. Okay. But, you know, I hear, I, I have heard, you know, that uh, Mr. Galone is the lawyer for the mayor and Mr. Welch here is the lawyer for the town council. Well, this, again, is the antagonism. We're trying to pull this uh, governing uh, body I, in I such agree. a way I that... I understand your point, but, you know, I always been very, very candid with saying I want to see people work together up here, but I think, you know, it's very important for us to have a separate legal representation in the administration, and that creates the checks and balances with government. And so, and, and plus, there's a lot of work entailed uh, by by uh, our, our attorneys. I mean, he doesn't just sit here for tonight. I mean, he's this guy's working all the time. He's doing all kinds of work for us at a very low fee. Uh -huh. And if he's not, if we got to put him on full time, we're not going to put him on if the fee is getting paid now. <laughs> He already is on full time with the fees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but so. basically, he is on full time with the fees. Yeah. Uh huh. But I I trust he's a resident of North Providence. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. 
Um, but, you know, the, uh, we, we have what is called a town solicitor, and this solicitor should be, you know, concerned about not just the mayor, but the town council and everybody. He does. He works with, he works with Mr. Wolf. Okay, well, that's not my impression. Wow. My impression is, you know, you have, you know, no, loan for the mayor and Welch for the town council. No, and together. what we need is, a, even if you have to go to a professional, I mean, a, a, not a professional, but I mean a big law firm that handles. Uh, Mr. President, can I have uh, the floor, please? Sure. I'm going to give you an example just to clear this up, okay? Thank you. We had a solar project that we worked on. Mr. Welch and Mr. Galone must have worked on that for minimum 50, 60 hours uh -huh. together with the other attorneys. The legality to put that program together to make it work for the town took all the attorneys t to work on that. They worked together all the time. Uh -huh. Administering what we did at the hospital the, the sale of Fatima, the attorneys had to work together. They had meetings. They always have correspondence back and forth. Mm -hmm. um, the solicitor, he has uh, things that he does, yes, for the mayor, but he also has attorneys that he hires to work for him for things that the mayor has, whether it's environmental expertise areas. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of what we do, there's a liability, and we need the protection ourselves. Mm -hmm. Mr. Welch also takes care of our ordinances, our resolutions. He keeps us compliant. Mm -hmm. So there is a need for that. You might not see it day to day. You may not read about it day to day, mm -hmm. but we can assure you that Everything is done in conjunction, whether we agree or disagree, mm -hmm. that's the way it has to be. Okay. So I hope that answers your question um, to let you know that everyone does work together, but okay. you might not read about it. Okay, well, that thank that's you. That's how for, it works. Thank you. thank you for clarifying my okay. mis misperception, but, uh, you know, it, this is a new year, so. Uh, so let's. Okay. Um, are we all set? We, I'm going to set up that meeting. Okay. And I'm going to have our clerk get in touch with you. And I look forward to that. I think we can nip that whole Gibbs Street, at least get, you know, some resolution yeah. to it. Yeah. Whether it's positive or negative, you know. Okay. We want right? to yeah, wrap it up, so to speak. All right. So. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you said you wanted to make our meeting shorter by not having licenses. Come on, Mr. Lamar. Yeah. You can come up. <laughs> yes. Ronnie Marcello from North Province, Ninth Place. And uh, I've been listening to this about 20 times. He keeps repeating himself about the accident, this and that. And if you got the word, he's thinking of the condominium up there. He's not thinking of the rest of the town. People use that street. Why should they, he, one person or the condominium, he's looking for his own personal gain. Thank you. Hey. Thank you. Thank you. Well, uh, to each his own, and I'm, I'm thinking of the uh, people who uh, attend St. Saint, Saint Anthony's on a Sunday morning. I'm thinking of the I, that I mass exodus out of the parking I lot, know. and then the, the repeating uh, funeral processions that go down from Woodward to Angel. But in any case, it is a hazardous road that has been uh, confirmed by the town planner, and it does need some attention. Thank you. How about an orange vest and a flag? Please? An orange vest and a flag when they exit. An orange How's that? Vest an orange and vest and a flag. And a flag. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Let's, okay. uh, let's move on. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. And we will and be in touch. I, and I, I wanted to ask you people, what, it t what does it take to get the mayor to attend your council meetings it, it, it here? Not, you know, you people decide and then it goes to him. If he were here... Okay, and that's why we want to get rid of the administrative about the licenses, that he's dealing with more important matters, and that you guys get your voting. He has a vote. Does he have a vote? No. He doesn't have a vote. Well, maybe you people ought to think in terms of, of uh, changing the, uh, the charter 
and make an amendment. I know it has been done two times. One, to raise the salary from 1500 to $8,000 for the councilmen, and another time to raise the salary of the mayor from twenty to 50000 So it can be done. Where there's a will, there's a way. So if you want, we're, we're talking about a transparent, a very uh, good governing body. I just got off the phone this afternoon from Wheaton, Illinois, that has a mayor and council that sit together. Okay. It is not a crazy idea. It goes back to the first millennium in All the right. church. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Item number 19, sewer cleanup. Received request to address the council from Angelina Ayatru concerning serious issues with sewer cleanup. Hi, doing? my name is Angelina Ayatru. Good evening. I am here tonight because we've been having an ongoing problem with the sewer and water backing up into our basement on Remington Street. I've lived there for 30 years and I've never had a problem until the last two years. Recently, excuse me, can yes. you say the name of the street? I couldn't quite Remington hear. Street. Remington, thank you. So um, this problem started about two years ago. Uh, at that time, I'd rather uh, not talk too much about it. Uh, Dick Fosh helped me out, and it was over and done with. Recently, uh, the beginning of December, we had water backing up into our basement. Um, I was notified at work. I came straight home. Before I came home, I called up Public Works and they were nice enough to send somebody immediately down to Remington Street. Um, that day happened to be raining, and uh, Bernard Salvatore came to my house. He looked around the basement. It was totally flooded. Everything was destroyed, and he indicated that the problem was internal. So he said, I need to get rotor rooter in there and clean it up. I had them come down that night. Uh, it wasn't really much that they had coming out of there. It was rather clean, so it stopped. About 10 days later, we had more water in the basement. My neighbor next door called me. She asked me to look in the basement to see if I had water because she had her basement flooded. So before going out, I ran downstairs and my basement was flooded again. It was a Sunday. A little bit of frustration set in, being a Sunday, didn't think we could get anybody down there, and we notified the police. I called, my neighbor called several times. Finally, they sent the crew down there, and we were out there waiting for them. We went up to Cooper Street, because Cooper Street is um, where our main line is. And the guys uh, put down the um, snake. And when they hit the pipe, everything came gushing out. So that stopped the problem of water in my basement. Um, I was informed that the reason this was happening is because the sewers were not being cleaned on a regular basis. This was the second time in two years and twice in one month that we had water back up. I have damages, extensive damages. I'm not um, going for that. All I need you to see is the bills that I've paid with rotor rooter that should have never been paid. If the town had done what they should have done, we would have never had any problem with sewer or water backup. Can I interrupt for one second? You may. I see, I see you filed a claim with the town, correct? I did. And the town DVW was out there? They came, they came out immediately. I did not have a problem with that. The problem, the first time when they came out, I think it was December 11th, when they came out, um, it was Bernard who came to my house and he did see the water all over my basement. I have a duplex. There was water on my side. There was water on my tenant's side. And he um, seemed to indicate that the water was coming from the foundation, which, of course, that's not true. Um, so 10 days later, it happened again. And when they came out, the crew mentioned that 
the problem was the sewers being backed up because they weren't being cleaned or maintained properly. Was your water, the, the, the problem you had, was it coming through the foundation? No, or was it, it was not. The pipes? It was coming from the washing machine pipes. Yeah. That's what's happening. And this has been going on now for two years. I've lived there for 30 years. Never have I had a problem. And I have a tenant next door. What do you think, what do you think created the problem? Who created the problem? Sam, what do you think after, now you said you've been living there in the last Well, year. like I said, I've been living there for 30 years. I've had tenants, and right now I have just one person living next door, but Prior to that, there were people, two or three people living there, and I never had a problem. I'm saying, what, why do you think all of a sudden? I think, the, well, from what I was informed, it's the sewers aren't being cleaned or maintained, whereas before they were being maintained on a regular basis. And we saw it firsthand when the crew came up to Cooper Street and put down the snake and cleaned out the uh, main line that goes down to Remington Street. <coughs> That was the blockage. Councilman. That's why it was backing up into our basement. Councilman DeStefanis, you have a question? Are, are you, so you're not the only one on the street that's having Oh, this no. Problem. I have my, I uh, claim there's other problem. people, there's three other people that had the same problem. The, the one that I know who notified me was Evelyn Tremontano, who lives next door to me. She notified me. Luckily, she notified me because I was on my way out. When I went downstairs, there was like a, a foot of water. That's not good. I mean, this is the second time that I've had problems and I have extensive damages. Okay. So I'd like to put a stop to this once and for all. I don't want to have this problem constantly. I have a tenant next door. I don't want her worrying about if she should be taking a shower or she should be doing any washing or anything else. You know, this is... I've lived there 30 years. I love the street. We take care of it. We clean up. We clean the church. We volunteer our services. We try to keep the street clean. So I don't want to have water unnecessarily charges, you know. So if there's something you can do and clean it up once and for all, I would definitely appreciate it. You know, we are taxpayers. Yeah, we try to keep the place. Thank you for coming and informing us You're on welcome. what's going on. I'm glad that you filed a claim with the town? Uh, well, I should have filed a claim back two years ago. I was told to file a claim. I neglected to file a claim. I never thought it was going to happen again. And when it happened again twice in a month, that's telling me there's yeah. something wrong. And it's not coming from within. It's Does anybody from the town. Any questions? All right. Well, well, I'm just sorry that you had to go through this. It's a shame that well, it is. The main it, it, wasn't and it's a shame and that I, the I was led to believe that it was my problem. And I see you know? that the documentation supports that it was the main sewer line that was clogged, and that was the source of the backup. So right. thank well, you for hopefully that evidence this will in. be the end of that. We're going to send a, I'm going to entertain a motion to send a community. In the first time, just excuse want to address. Just, oh. let me, just let me get the motion out of the way. Sorry? Just let me get the motion out of the way first. Oh, I'm going to entertain right a motion because you already sure. have it in the claims committee, which is we're going to refer that now well, at the end of the meeting. Um, but I'm also going to entertain a motion to send a communication to our DPW, acting DPW director to see that he can go down there and address this issue and make sure that, you know, it's taken care of. So, so moved. Second. Motion has been made by uh, Councilman Brady, seconded by Catanzaro. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? You guys have it. Okay. Thank, thank you. you for coming out. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Item number 20, Stillwater Avenue. Council President Audiello requests discussion and possible vote concerning putting a street light on Stillwater Avenue. Okay, I'm going to make a motion to send a letter to National Grid to have a light, street light put on Stillwater Avenue. It's pole 1-1, and it runs off Kentland Street. It's the only house on the street. It's the only pole on the street. So and moved. Second. Second. It's on uh, Stillwater Avenue. And it's on what street? Uh, Kentland. Kentland. It's the only pole on the street. It's across from house number 79. So a motion's been made. By Councilman Catanzaro, seconded by Councilman DeStefanis. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Ayes have it. 
Item number 21, the Brailsford abatement. Uh, Councilman, Council President Odiello requests discussion and possible vote concerning Brailsford abatement. As you know, I've been on this for a couple years now. This is an ongoing issue. Um, it's never really been as resolved, and that kind of doesn't sit well with me. Uh, the Brailsfords, uh, the taxpayers in the towns for many years, lived next door to me um, and never received the uh, homestead exemption on their house. So um, I'm bringing this back up because I want to see if we can try and do right by them. And, and they deserve it because, you know, I'm a witness. They've lived there. They sold the house now, but they lived there for a long time. And uh, I'm going to make a motion to refer this item to the Finance uh, Committee, and I'll provide the information from there. So moved. Second. Second. The motion's been made by Councilman Catanzaro, seconded by Councilman, Councilwoman Brady. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And num item number 22, high service avenue parking signs. Council President Audiello requ requests discussion and possible vote concerning no parking signs on high service avenue in front of Stephen Only Park. Um, we've taken up this issue a couple times now, and really the main concern is the two no parking signs right in from front of the entrance of uh, Stephen Only Park on high service avenue. They've never been taken down. So I'm gonna entertain a motion to send a letter to our DPW director to take those signs down. We've already had the, uh, the approval from the state to take them down, so. So moved. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. I Council. have a question, Mr. President. Yep, go ahead. Didn't we, um, weren't we notified that those two signs had to stay up? And no. then they took the ones off on the other sides? They took them off, but then I reread it with a constituent that put that on. And All those? He felt as though they could come down, so. Okay. And. I thought there was just a reason. I, I don't it was, care if they're up or yeah, down, but I, I thought I, it said. He felt, the way he interpreted it and I interpreted it, I think Marianne, I mean, I'm not to put you on the spot. If you remember, we read it a couple, like it was like a year and a half yeah. ago. It read as though those signs could come down, and I really don't see a reason why they can't, because the problem is now that the snow's coming, when people sled, they all they pop in front of this poor, poor guy's house and block his driveway. So. Right. Um, I'm going to see if we can get them down. So, motion's been made by Catanzaro, seconded by Brady. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Ayes have it. Town Council Committees, item number 23. Town Council President to appoint Council Committees. First name listed on each committee should be the Chairman of said committee, and Town Council President is ex officio of all committees. The envelope says. <laughs> <laughs> okay, claims committee, Stephen Fayola, Alice Brady, Manny Giusti. Public safety, Bill Warren, Ray DeStefanis, Kristen Catanzaro. Finance, Ray DeStefanis, Bill Warren, Manny Giusti. Public services, Alice Brady, Ray DeStefanis, Kristen Catanzaro. Ordinance, Manny Giusti, Bill Warren, Stephen Fayola. Economic development, Kristen Catanzaro, Alice Brady, Bill Warren. Okay, I'll make a motion to approve the committees. So moved. Second. Motion's been made and seconded by Councilman Catanzaro, seconded by Brady. Any discussion? Questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Ayes have it. Item number 24, amusement licenses. Receive applications for the renewal of amusement devices, amusement centers, coin-operated pool tables, non-coin-operated pool tables, miniature bowling, and auto wrecking and salvage. Okay, I know all of you have the list in front of you. Um, I'm gonna take them group by group. And if anybody has any questions, just speak up. 2014, 2015 amusement devices, $75 per device. I have a motion to, I'm gonna entertain a motion to approve, subject so, to all necessary requirements. So moved. Do I have a second? Motion made by Councilwoman Catanzaro, seconded by Councilman Juicy. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? You guys have it. Amusement center, $300. Uh, 
I make a motion to approve pending all necessary requirements. So moved. Second. Motion has been made by Councilwoman Catanzaro, seconded by Councilwoman Brady. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Coin op pool tables, $75 per table. I'll entertain a motion to approve pending all necessary requirements. So moved. Second. Motion has been made by Councilwoman Catanzaro, seconded by Councilwoman Brady. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All, all those opposed, the ayes have it. Non coin op pool tables, $25 per table. I'll entertain a motion to approve pending all necessary requirements. So moved. Second. Motion has been made by Councilwoman Catanzaro, seconded by Councilwoman Brady. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed, the ayes have it. Miniature bowling, $20 per game. I'll entertain a motion to approve pending all necessary requirements. So moved. Second. Motion has been made by Councilwoman Brady, seconded by Motion has been made by Councilwoman Catanzaro, seconded by Councilwoman Brady. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Ayes have it. Auto wrecking and salvage, $100. I'll make a motion to approve pending all necessary requirements. So moved. Second. Motion has been made by Councilwoman Catanzaro, seconded by Councilman Brady. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Aye. 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 Yeah, 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 that's fine. Okay, let's get my letters Item number 25, board appointments. Town council discussion and action with regard to appointments to be made to the following boards. Board of Trustees, Public Libraries. We received a communication from the mayor to reappoint Sammy Marcos and from, uh, received a communication from Brendan Snodgrass, excuse me, chairman of the Republican Party to reappoint Sammy Marcos. So I'll make a motion to approve, uh, reappoint Sammy Marcos. So, so second. second. Motion has been made by Councilman Brady, seconded by Councilman DeStefanis. All those in favor? Aye. 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 have it. Housing Authority. Uh, you wanna, Ray, you had asked me, did you want to make that appointment? Uh, yeah, but I have to, can we extend that? Because I have to have the letters put in, or can I do that now? Okay, I'll make a motion to continue this till next month. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Motion has been made by Councilman Brady, seconded by Councilman Juicy to move that to next month. Planning Board. We received a communication from the mayor to reappoint Warren Riccatelli, Jr., Henry Riccatelli, and Ernest, Ernesto Persichino. We have a motion to reappoint Warren Riccatelli, Jr., Henry Riccatelli, and Ernest Persichino. So moved. Do I have a second? Okay. Motion has been made by Councilman Canzaro, seconded by Councilman Giusti. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Zoning Board. I, we received a communication, I believe you all have it, from Charles Pollock Jr. asking to be reappointed. I'll make a motion to reappoint Charles Pollock Jr. So moved. Second. Motion has been made by Councilman Brady, seconded by Councilman, Ca Councilman Canzaro. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Ayes have it. Police Pension Board of Review. I want to make a motion to appoint Councilwoman Catanzaro. So moved. Second. Motion has been made by Councilwoman Catanzaro, seconded by C Councilwoman Brady. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Ayes have it. All those opposed? Advisory Committee, Parks and Recreation. I'm going to make a motion to appoint Councilman DeStefanis. So moved. Second. I have a second. Motion has been made 
by Councilman Catanzaro, seconded by Councilwoman Brady. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Town auctioneers, I'm going to make a motion to approve Al Cristofaro and Salvatore J. Corio. So moved. Second. second. Have a second. Motion has been made by Councilwoman Brady, seconded by Councilwoman Catanzaro. All Mr. President, I have a question. Go ahead. Do we even use our town auctioneers? Does anyone know? Yeah. Do they? Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Associate Municipal Judge, we received a communication from Mayor Charles Lombardi to reappoint Valentino Lombardi. Do I have a motion to reappoint Valentino Lombardi? So Second. moved. Motion has been made by Councilman Catanzaro, seconded by Councilman DeStefanis. So all those in favor? Aye. Aye. I just have it. Environmental Commission, uh, the mayor asked me to, to appoint Bernardo Salvatore, the acting director of DPW. Do I have a motion to reappoint, I mean to appoint acting director Salvatore? Second. So second. Motion has been made by Councilman Juicy, seconded by Councilman Catanzaro. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And Tree Warden. Uh, I'm going to make a motion to reappoint Fayette Amsden. So moved. Second. second. Motion has been made and seconded. Motion has been made by Councilwoman Brady, seconded by Councilwoman Catanzaro to reappoint Fayette Amsden. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? The ayes have it. Item number 26, we received claims from the following. Angelina Aitriu, Eric Diaz, Gerald Tramontano, and Michael Grenga. I entertain a motion to refer these claims to the Claims Committee. So Second. moved. Motion has been made by Councilwoman Brady, seconded by Councilman DeStefanis. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? The ayes have. Item number 27, Claims Committee report. Town, discussion, town Council discussion and action with regard to the Claims Committee report from meeting of December to be presented by Council President Dino Wadiello. I'm going to entertain a motion to approve, to approve the claim, uh, Claims Committee report as submitted. So moved. Second. Have a second. Motion has been made by Councilman Brady, seconded by Councilman Catanzaro. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Tax addendas. Town Council discussion and action with regard to illicit tax addendas received from Janice Muscatelli, acting tax assessor in the amount of $1,883.83 for tangibles with corresponding abatements. So moved. Second. Another motion to addend? So moved. Motion has been made by Councilman Canzaro, seconded by Councilman Brady. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Have it. All those opposed? Tax abatements under $1,000. Town Council discussion and action with regards to, to the list of tax abatements under $1,000. Received, it, received from Janice Moscatelli, Acting tax, tax Assessor and Board of Tax Review, in the amount of $472.10 for motor vehicles and $1,880.83 for tangibles, tangibles with cor corresponding uh, addendas. Do I have a motion to abate? So moved. Second. There's a second. Motion has been made by Councilwoman Catanzaro, seconded by Councilwoman Brady. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? The ayes have it. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Motion's been made. Second. 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 All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting adjourned.